Jesse L. Weston's from Ritual to Romance. T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland was inspired by it. Jesse Weston's from Ritual to Romance is her most famous of 18 books, and this is, ni this is a 1920 book. Animus ad ablitunenem, mysterium pro modulo suo delatetur, non mysteria ad angustias, animi constrigantur. Quote from Bacon, many, liter many literary classics seems to th seem to think that a hypothesis about obscure and remote questions of history can be refuted by a simple demand for the production of more evidence than in fact exists. But the truth of a hypothesis, if it cannot be shown to conflict with known truths, is the number of facts that it correlates and explains. Cornford in the Origins of Attic Comedy, and she's criticized as being a theosophist. Um, she wasn't exactly part of the movement officially, and there's some reasons why people think that that's not the case, but the preface goes, in the introductory chapter, the reader will find the aim and the object of these studies set forth at length. In view of the importance and complexity of the problems involved, it seemed better to incorporate such a statement in the book itself rather than relegate it to a preface, which all might not trouble to read. Yet, I feel that such a general statement does not adequately express my full debt of obligation. Among the many whose labor has been laid under contribution in the following pages, there are certain scholars whose published work, our personal advice, has been specifically illuminating, and to whom many specific and to whom specific acknowledgement is therefore due. Like many others, I owe to Sir J. G. Fraser the initial inspiration which sets me, as I may truly say, on the road to the Grail Castle. Without the guidance of the Golden Bough, I should probably, as the late M. Gaston Pearls, uh, M. Gaston Paris, happily expressed it, still be wandering in the forest of Brocaliand. And wasn't James George Fraser accused of plagiarism? But didn't he, you know, he admitted he didn't all, you know, make it up himself. He wasn't writing a novel or something. Um, but was it like 12 volumes? Um, I think I've read it at some point. Uh, it turns out to be a rather expensive set of things to have. I was hoping to get it, but even borrowing it from the library, it could cost five hundred dollars for a for a one of the reprints of it. And they may make you buy the whole thing just to get the one volume that that you damaged. So borrowing it is not exactly a wise idea. During the Bay Ruth Festival of 1911, I had a frequent opportunity of meeting and discussion with Professor von Schroeder. I owe to him not only the introduction to his own work, which I found most helpful, but references which have been of the greatest assistance, e.g. my knowledge of commands less religions orientals and Schiftelwitz's valuable study on fish symbolism, both of which have furnished important links in the chain of evidence, is due to Professor von Schroeder. The, pursu the perusal of Miss J. E. Harrison's Themis opened my eyes to the extended importance of these vegetation rites in view of the evidence there introduced, I asked myself whether beliefs which had found expression not only in social institution 
and popular custom, but as set forth in Sir G. Murray's study on Greek dramatic origins attached to the work also in drama and literature, might not reasonably, even inevitably, be expected to have left their mark on romance. The one seemed to me a necessary corollary to the other, and I feel that I have gained, as a result of Miss Harrison's work, a wider and more assured basis for my own researches. I was no longer engaged merely in inquiring into the sources of a fascinating legend, but on the identification of another field of activity for forces whose potency as agents of evolution were only now beginning rightly to appreciate. So Aleister Crowley and other, and Joseph Campbell and Mercy Elion, uh, they weren't exactly the f starters of these things. They were just perhaps better in the categories that they were in. Oh, H.P. Pulaski, uh, yeah, I guess, too. Um, but they were, you know, they were either the pinnacle or just the most famous. Um, well, I mean, they, they, they gained more popularity. That's what I mean, but... Sometimes it takes a village for one to accomplish, right? Finally, a casual reference in Anne Rich's work on the mysteries to the Nassim document, which caused me to apply to Mr. G. R. S. Mead, of, whom, of whose knowledge of the mysterious borderland between Christianity and what they call paganism, and willingness to place that knowledge at the disposal of others I had for some years past, had pleasant experience. Mr. Mead referred me to his own translation and analysis of the text in question, and there, to my satisfaction, I found not only the final link that completed the chain of evolution from the so-called pagan mystery to Christian ceremonial, but also proof of wider significance I was beginning to apprehend. The problem involved was not one of folklore, not even one of literature, but of comparative religion in its widest sense. Thus, while I trust that my co-workers in the field of Arthurian research will accept these studies as a permanent contribution to the elucidation of the Grail problem, I would fain hope that those scholars who labor in a wider field and to whose works I owe so much may find the results here set forth elements that may prove of real value in the study of the evolution of religious belief. Jesse, um, okay, what's her middle name? L. Weston, Paris, October 1919, and the little summaries of the chapters is quite good, but we will be going into the actual chapters.